Tomatoes.com where fine spirits meet. And today we have the Tomatin 12 years old 43% ABV. And yeah, Tomatin, I've been to the Tomatin distillery, wonderful distillery with a nice water source up the road. And yeah, you know, they, they really do have a good business going there that people do know what they're doing and it's uh, t the 12 year old uh, tomatin is kind of like their beginner's whiskey in the core range and the whole topic about tomatin is the softer side of the highlands so yes they are a bit of a yeah, softer style which is kind of the thing about the highlands if you think about the highlands uh, the lowlands distilled a lot of stuff and even went into column still so tons and tons was produced and the whiskey back in the days was not there was no age restriction so they didn't have to be three years old so it was just going out and uh, yeah and be sold and stuff was pretty sharp and just yeah, strong stuff and in the highlands uh, they also probably did some strong stuff but um, they had to store it. They couldn't just sell it easily to Glasgow or ship out and be it uh, somewhere at immediate time. So they had to be stored in casks and transported with donkey above the highlands and then find a ship or be sold in, into a pub or some. So they stayed in casks a lot longer. And um, that means they matured more and were softer. So this is where the soft touch of the highlands came from. And, one of the, I think, British or English kings were, were going, ah, I want to have one of these soft Highland whiskies in. And then he got them and he legalized them. Yeah. But I don't know, that, that's maybe a rumor. But that's where the uh, the thing comes from, that people age their stuff in casks and cask was more of a transport thing. And they realized that transporting and aging it longer in these barrels and this casks actually yeah, made the whiskey better. The whole thing about uh, who invented that, I don't know if it's the Scottish, the Irish, or the Americans, or maybe someone else, <laughs> because everyone has that story. Yeah, we aged it and shipped it down to Mississippi, or I don't know. <laughs> so the, the whole thing with aging in, in, in casks was uh, yeah, a thing of, of transport back in the days casks were really important and to, to say this one is matured first in bourbon casks and then for six to nine months in sherry casks so it, it's kind of a bit classical with sherry because back in the days like the very very old days 150 200 years the british navy was really keen on sherry so that was the stuff that they took with them beer didn't last so they went with sherry and all the sherry casks were just scattered all over the world in Scotland as well so the Scottish whiskey was mainly put into sherry casks and that was a that was their thing so they they put whiskey into sherry casks so the classical method of a classical Highland Highlander would be actually a sherry cask. now that sherry just went downhill and bourbon went uphill and scotch went uphill then they're not enough to sherry casks to go around so the Scottish turned to bourbon casks. so this is the new classical because that already exists for I don't know 50 70 years that the um, bourbon cask is the main cask where whiskey is being matured in so yeah a bit of an excursion into other topics yeah uh, yeah, so we have a bit of a yeah, new age classic whiskey where you have bourbon casks and sherry casks in them. Mm -hmm. the, the whiskey is about 30, 37 euros. Um, you can actually buy them on whiskey.com if you live in the Netherlands. We do ship to the Netherlands now. Ooh, oh, that is a beautiful, nice, Oh, nice, soft, sweet whiskey. That is nice. It has a, a distinctive um, fresh fruitiness, a bit of a bourbon character with, uh, what do you call it, uh, vanilla and sweetness and caramel. But strangely enough, if you get your nose a bit deeper into that glass, you do get a bit of a fresh note in there. For me, uh, it's not like a rye freshness, more of a, a peppermint freshness, but it's not that as fresh. I would say like like peppermint tea that you've let it rest for the, on the counter for like half a day or something like that. 
still fresh but a bit damp as well yeah good things that have been matured are a bit more round and softness so yeah smell is definitely the soft side of the highlands mm. 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 Oh, this is a typical Highland whiskey, typical Highland Scotch. I have that sweetness, I have the sherry influence, fresh fruitiness, pears. Mm. It, it reminds me a little bit of that that style that Horst had here, the, the Horst Luning, whiskey.de malt by Horst Luning. Um, he also went for a really typical Highland style or Scotch Highland style. He wanted to show that within his blend. And mm, that has a lot of similarities to that one. Mm, I do like it. Mm. Although, this might be a little stronger than his one. Mm -hmm. But beautiful. It's uh, In the end, now that I have my like third little sip, I do have a little bit of a aromatic note to it as well. So it's not just as easy as, as drinking. But uh, it is uh, a beginner's whiskey, and it shows you a good, uh, decent, yeah, decent view into the uh, the Highland malt. So I would say, yeah, it is beginner's friendly. If you have a friend who might be interested in Scotch, then you could serve him a Tomat in twelve years, and that would be, a, I would say, yeah, that would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah, that was it with my take on the Tomat in twelve years. Thank you very much for watching. And see you next time.